Welcome into the Arc Sports Business Podcast. I'm being told that Urban Meyer is going to be the new coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars, and that begs the question, does he love London weather that much? Let's dive in. All right, so today the news was announced that Urban Meyer would be the new coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars, the NFL team. Of course, Urban Meyer is of collegiate football fame, perhaps Hall of Fame. He was the coach at Utah. He went to huge success, had huge success at Utah. Coach at Florida had great success. Uh, Went to Ohio State, took them, won a national championship, and then was kind of retired out of there or forced retirement based on you know, a handling of an assistant coach. And so at a pretty young age of 56, he had been out of work for several years and his name was constantly floated. It was floated uh, for the Dallas Cowboys job, perhaps by him. We don't know. And uh, so here he is. He's landed at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, many people are going to speculate on, will he have success there? Was it success in recruiting or was it in, in offensive schemes or defensive schemes or or building a, a great team of coaches. We don't know. And his success at Jacksonville, I'm not going to speculate on. There's many, many people speculating on it that could do a far better job than I can. Of course, he's got Trevor Lawrence coming in as a quarterback, but that's for someone else to, to speculate on. What I find interesting here is that today or so, we've found that he's been announced as the new head coach of Jacksonville Jaguars. And yesterday, the Lot J development deal was turned down. It was struck dead by the city council. So of course, the Lot J development deal was on the parking lot J at the Jacksonville Jaguars Stadium. So the current Jacksonville Jaguars Stadium, there was a parking lot called Lot J. There was going to be a development there. Uh, Restaurants, I think like 75,000 square feet of retail and restaurants, uh, 120 unit to 250 unit hotel, just a very large development. So we've got that deal being struck down, which we'll talk more about in this episode. We've got Urban Meyer coming in, that deal being struck down, and there's a cloud or a a situation overhead where there's cities that the NFL wants to expand into, namely London. Of course, in London's case, many people view that Jacksonville is the front runner. Although there's many other candidates, there's, there's other cities that are candidates, there's the potential for an expansion franchise. That could be an option to go to London or to go to Toronto or something like that. Mexico City, another option. But Jacksonville has a connection with London, right? They play two of their home games over there this year. That's two of eight home games. So in the London uh, Bowl or whatever they call it, Jacksonville is the home team. So Jacksonville is the home team in this London Bowl. And they're always the home team. So when they go over there, they're the home team. They lose a home game during the regular season. The opposing team does not. So a team will go over and play in London. The Tennessee Titans went over and played in London. They don't lose the home game. The Jack- Jacksonville Jaguars, they lose the home game. So this year, in 2020, Jacksonville Jaguars went over. They played two games in London. So they played two games in London, two games of eight. They lose those two games. They only have six home games. So there's speculation. There could be other owners. There's other owners of other teams that have connections in England. But of course, Shaq Khan, who owns the Jacksonville Jaguars, also owns Fulham FC, and he's based out of London. So he's been fine and good having them go play in Wembley Stadium in London. Uh, He even made an offer to buy Wembley Stadium, which was rescinded. That happened this past year. And so He's got this close connection with London. The Jacksonville Jaguars have this close connection with London. You could say that the NFL is playing this London series to test and to work out kinks that's happening abroad. Of course, that's, that's kind of consensus. They're testing out the kinks, the, the implications of logistics, seeing if, if people will show up in that market, and they've been doing it for years. Now, Khan has mentioned that Going to London, playing these games in London has benefited the franchise. It's 
it, it was a struggling franchise in Jacksonville. Going to London's benefited the franchise. And of course it has. We think of Jacksonville Jaguars and we, we literally think of London now. We think of going over to London. They're kind of the London team. And they are the London team. So we've got this combination of the Lot J deal falling through. Jacksonville being a team that's close to London. And now we've got Urban Meyer coming in. Let's talk a little bit about the Lot J deal. So the Lot J deal was a development deal on the site of the stadium. Now the stadium, the stadium is a huge part of the team, right? Like the stadium, the parking, that's a big deal for the owner, uh, Bob Kraft, obviously. He sort of wedged his way into being the only viable owner for the New England Patriots by already owning the parking. And so it made it tough for any other deal to kind of get through. And then he owned stadium and had a, had a, you know, a, a land lease kind of situation was able to be sort of the only bidder in some, in some sense for the team that was, that was really a, had a viable case. And now you see with the, with the Boston stadium, there's a whole, an outdoor section. There's, there's all of these retailers, there's the TB12 retailer, and that helps because a lot of these stadiums are kind of out and there's nothing really around them. Nashville's case with the Titans is very different. You can walk across the walking bridge and you're literally in downtown Nashville. So that works very well. The downtown Nashville businesses do very well on game day and and people want to come to the games because they've got that sort of added amenity of being very close to the downtown. Now in Jacksonville case, they're kind of in that same case, kind of same situation. There's the stadium, not really much around it. And Khan wanted to do a deal where he could bring more to that stadium. Now in looking to get that deal done, he wanted some city support. So it was a $450 million deal. He wanted $245 million of city funds. Now, of course, the Jacksonville Jaguars, the organization, they lease the stadium from Jacksonville, the city. The city owns the land where this Lot J development would occur. Now, in doing these deals, cities, of course, view that they are going to increase their tax base and they issue bonds to, to fund these deals. And then maybe they'll have a surcharge on some part of a lease or on hotel rooms, et cetera, et cetera, uh, that they have kind of in an effort to pay back that public money. So Khan wanted the $245 million bond issuance. They went back and forth with the city. The city had, you know, they determined that they had about $830 million of borrowing power, that, that they could do this deal. And one of the sort of points of contention, so they were, you know, there was these proposals, they were going to have the a surcharge on the hotel rooms go from 1% to 1.5%. They went back and forth with the city. So the Jack's Daily Record has a lot of this information. They have the PDFs for the sort of the back and forth on the emails between the city, the Jacksonville Jaguars, their outside council. And so there was the point of contention on the, the hotel rental rate where the, the city would get that 1.5% on all hotel room booking revenue uh, in an effort to help pay back that bond issuance. But one of the key points that most likely put a, put a monkey in the wrench was the there was a sixty five point five million dollar quote unquote bread box loan and the coastal dot com has a great article about this but basically what the bread box loan was is would be a loan sixty five point five million dollars interest free to the developers and it would help from tax purposes because you've normally it, it's it's a it's a way of giving a grant and normally when you give the grant the the recipient of the grant has a taxation associated with that. In this case, this bread box loan would be given to a trust. The developer, the giver of the loan would go into the trust together. The developer would post some level of collateral. Uh, in this case, uh, it would be about $13 million and the rest would be able to be used by the developer. And they wouldn't have to pay tax on it as it being a grant and they would be able to use it as they please, right? So there wouldn't be these normal checks that would happen with a grant. One of the issues and one of the reasons that it was hard to sell to the people and the constituents was that most likely the city would have to issue bonds to fund this bread box loan. So the city would issue the bonds, 
the city would pay interest on the bonds, and then they would give the money interest-free to Khan and his developer group. So they, the city had auditors come in and kind of review the plan, and the auditors were, were sort of of the belief that the tax revenue that would be earned from this plan over the future would only be about 40 cents on the dollar, and ideally in these scenarios, you would get a dollar on the dollar. And so, long story short, uh, about a week ago, they voted. They were able to send it to a final vote, which happened yesterday, and it was struck down. So that deal's dead. Now, according to team president, they're going to look at another area to do a development within Jacksonville, and that potentially can be the case. But with breaking ground on a practice facility in London, and with this deal being struck down and with a practice facility being built in London and this deal being struck down, it's a very interesting cocktail of what could come. Of course, now you've got a big name coach in Urban Meyer, potentially a big time quarterback coming in in Trevor Lawrence. So having this new coach, having the star quarterback may raise their uh, level and notoriety within the U S and within the NFL. And that's possible. And that's possible. Or maybe having this high-profile coach, this high-profile quarterback come in and having these connections to London, having a practice facility being built in London, and having this $500 million stadium deal shot down by the city, maybe it could be a stepping stone to take the coach, the player, and the team with ties abroad to a new market for the NFL. We'll see. Maybe it'll be a couple games a year. Maybe it'll be three games a year. Maybe it'll be all the games. We'll see. Thank you for listening. Again, like, subscribe. Everything helps. We're early in the process. And um, we'll see how this goes with Urban Meyer and Jacksonville Jaguars. Thank you. Have a great night. <laughs>